We talk about why used cars are such a huge part of the market, and we give you our picks in three different price categories. Next on Talking Cars. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Talking Cars with Consumer Reports. I'm John Linkove. I'm Jake Fisher. And I'm Jennifer Stockberger. And you can see that we have a, a whole new setup, but we've been listening to the comments because we have new mic stands, we're, we're looking at different filters. We, we heard that everyone wants to see our pretty faces. So here we are. We're, we're trying some new things every week and shaking it up a little bit. And there's going to be changes over the next couple of weeks, but please, we're going to roll with it. Let us know in the comments. Let us know what you think of it. Um, and, and as part of the change-up, we're not going to be talking about cars that are in our fleet today. We're going to be talking about used cars because used cars, huge part of the automotive universe. Example, in 2015, 17.4 million new cars sold. Do you know how many used cars were sold that year? Uh, You're going to tell us. Hazard a guess? Hazard yeah. a guess? Uh, three, three times. Oh, you studied. 43 <laughs> million used uh, cars were sold that, that year. 44 million used cars were sold in 2016. Right. So it's a huge part of the world. And I think like Jen was saying at, at one point, a lot of people obviously buy them because it's the only option for right. them, right? Right. They can't, they can't even fathom 25 grand or 30 grand for a new car. They just so, can't do it. So, I mean, there's just a weird opposite thing going on, right? So people are buying used cars, but everyone's talking about new cars. Yeah. And we talk about new cars all the yeah. time because of the shiny new thing, right? You go to the auto show, there's no auto show for used cars. Um, maybe there should be because there's a whole lot more choices in the used car market. Exactly, exactly. Well, it's all the cars that, you know, people have, uh, you know, been leasing, you know, they trade it, they, they're right. done with the three year right. lease, they bring them back, they lease something new. A lot of cars people trade in. They're good vehicles, they're solid, you know, they took care of them and they're out there for people to buy. And like Jen was saying, yeah, the new car right now, $33,000, $35,000 is the average price. That's a ton mm -hmm. of money. Mm -hmm. so, and, and the choices you have for used cars have never been greater. So I mean, there's new ways of getting used cars. I mean, you could go to Craigslist, you go on eBay Motors, sure. you could go, and, 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 and to the point of leasing, leasing has really exploded in the last yeah. several years. And what that means is there's tons of these cars in the market. It's not about getting the used rental car because you don't know how that really went. But you have these certified pre-owned vehicles that have about 36,000 miles, they've been taken yeah. care of, and they actually come with a manufacturer warranty. Well, especially the certified. And they're not old. They're not even old. <laughs> Three, Three years, years old. four years old. That's right. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And some are even off of a two-year lease because some people can only get into a two-year lease to be able to, to lease something. And the certified ones are in particular really interesting. I mean, for, for years we talked about don't get anything with a certified warranty, you know, don't get an extended warranty, just buy the reliable car. And it's true. You know, buy that Honda Accord and don't get the warranty on it because, you know, nine times out of 10, and our reliability data shows it, it's gonna be a solid car. And you take that $2,000 for certification and you put it in the bank. Right. But you know what, if you're taking a risk on something or if you just want that extra, you know, backing of having the warranty, it's, it's if you know about it upfront, go ahead and do that. And those are the cars that the dealers take <clears throat> and, and they sort of like, because they know they're already in good condition. Well, I mean, I think it's really important to se separate the two things about the, kind of the traditional used car warranty and the certified pre-owned sure, vehicle. Sure. So, I mean, it used to be you go to a used car lot, you know, it is John's, you know, the special used car. <laughs> the like wavy this, guy, right? Yeah. And I mean, these cars, you have no idea what happened and you're paying extra for this used car warranty that covers this, but doesn't cover this. And, and who knows if that place is going to be around. But when you're buying a used Mercedes Benz or, or used Honda that has been leased, and now you've got a factory backed extended That's warranty, key. That's key. it's kind of a different animal. And if your alternative is buying a new car, you know, a lot of people, they don't want to get a used car because there's risk involved, right? I mean, they don't want to have somebody else's problems. They don't want a car that's under warranty. They don't want to get off the new transmission or whatever these, oh, these sure, issues sure. are. But these cars, if you do your homework, you get a car that's reliable and the car that's actually backed. You're, you're almost getting the same experience as a used car, uh, as a new car. As a new car. Yeah. Right, right. Well, and, you know, just if there's, if there's any other reason for why we're talking about it, just think of this, some, some numbers for you. The wonky... You know, a little boring, but it, it's, right. it makes a big point. I'm tuning, tuning out everybody. What average, are you doing? <laughs> average price of a new car, $35,000. Okay. Right. Value after six months, $31,000. Oh, so it's immediate. Yeah. Value after yeah. one year, $28,000. Value after three years. So that car that just came mm -hmm. off the lease, $17,900. Wow. So it's a lost huge jump. 50% of its value. In three yeah. years. Sounds like a great car. investment. Sounds like a great investment, right. You know, whereas, then sign me up for another one. Whereas right. when you get a used car, you're not going through that at all. You're getting a car that that has lost its value, right. and it's just, it's a much slower decline. So so you might get a nice three-year-old vehicle that's lost 50% of its value after six years, 
you know, it's lost much less. You're not cutting your, your value in half again. Yeah. And, and particularly for, you know, people who, with kids getting into a car, you know, you would like them to get the newest car possible, of course, right, Jen? Yeah, we'll talk about that when I get to my picks. Okay, so, so we'll yeah, I bring away. that there. Don't give it away yet. Okay. Yeah, we'll, I'm we'll getting keep. there. <laughs> but, but, it, but it is, it's the option that most families have for, for a car. Yep. You know, and, and that's where a, a huge part of the market is going to be. You know, it's a student in high school or someone who's graduating college, a lot of debt possibly, or just, you know, starting out in the world. Right, first job, yeah. You know, that's that's key. So that's why, you know, yep. ideas like that, reasons like that, are why we've, we've kind of taken a look at this, because most people buy by price. Some people buy by style. I, I want an SUV, and then they go that way. But mm -hmm. you know what? You know your budget, Yep. and you fall into it. So we've, we, we, we put out the question, so what if your budget was... $10,000, $15,000, or $20,000, what would you buy? And we're going to start at $10,000. Right. And we haven't shared this yet. We haven't shared this, so, with, so it's all going to be the same car. We don't know each other's picks yet. Yeah. It's all going to be an E30 don't, M3. Don't yeah, don't peek. Uh, or an R Audi RS4, right? Stop. <laughs> right? Stop. So anyway, I'm going to throw it to Jen first, because I want to know $10,000. So okay. anywhere up to $10,000, your budget, what would you choose? Okay, so I picked, and again, we're, we're choosing some from our used car data, the cars that are kind of our good bets. So I picked a 0809 Hyundai Sonata. Okay. So the reason I picked it is when you start in that under 10,000 range, as you would expect, it skews way over to subcompact compacts. Sure. Stuff that was inexpensive in the first place. Sonata gets you a little more room than some of those. I think the used car, I mean, it's a great value when it's new. That keeps going into the used car market. Sure. You touched on, and I'm going to say it here, we are just starting to see, again, and I've said this before, as a mother of a young driver, it's the first time we're starting to see the standard ESC cars come in under that 10,000 mark in, in volume. There, were, there was a few, right. but now you can get a car with standard electronic stability control for a young driver under $10,000. And that's, that's a life-saving safety feature. Right. I mean, and it's the, new, the modern safety belt. Right, if there's nothing else we've said for a teen driver or a young driver, you gotta get that. The one thing I noticed on the Hyundai too is we publish a range for those 08, 09 Sonatas it's getting close to the $5,000 mark at the base of that mm -hmm. range. You compare it to an 07 Accord, a year older, mm -hmm. and that's 7,500. Right. So you're already balancing against the more reliable names. I think you benefit somewhat from Hyundai's still reputation that it still battles with in the value. So that was my pick, Hyundai Sonata. Yeah, they made it, They made a, a good car, and they just a great car. Yeah. had that the baggage of people still thinking when they came over. Yep back in you know the late 80s early 90s and, and they're putting out just, just yeah. garbage and i still hear it i don't know if you guys still hear it, like oh hyundai or oh, kia you know you'll get that comment <laughs> well, they do have the reputation you do. They, they, do. Do. they do and i'm like no 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 it's not the same right. anymore so that's anyway. right jake what have yes you well first of all yes i did cheat i used consumer reports information and <laughs> you know i mean look i mean are so, are, you know so we, we have a lot of products on that we have <laughs> a whole robust uh, you know, rollout basically of used car data. Yeah, I mean, so. if you're paying attention on consumer reports online, I mean, even even if you're not a subscriber, um, you could go on there and you could see basically every single year of the used car. You could see what goes wrong with the cars. Uh, we put a lot of free information out there too, yeah, which is kind of information. Well, and, and, and a lot of like uh, what people think about those cars, what actually experiences they had with reliability. So it's all there. But um, so uh, let me preface this that this is not my car. This is my advice mm -hmm. to a friend, yeah. and I say that because I would probably get something wacky like you know a you know early '90s RX-7 or. <laughs> Uh, something a classic of some yeah, yeah exactly yes, yes, so yes. I mean nobody really knows wants to know what what I'm getting but I mean if I if someone came to me and said I got 10 grand I want to buy a car um, 2010 Mazda 6 yeah um, I mean again this is a car that's got stand, it's got stability control um, it's got unbelievable reliability you can get them with a six-speed manual um, that's they're actually available and that's a great transmission really makes the car really fun but you know roomy it's 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 a good choice yeah solid vehicle solid I I, I put a couple couple options in each one oh so you're oh, cheating because I said the, oh, question. Achiever, I set up the questions it was you know I'm hosting I it's it's, it's my, shiny, it my shiny bald head that gets to be seen <laughs> most of the time um, so a couple categories, 2010 to 12 Mazda 3. I chose a 10 to 12, even though there's other ones that are reliable, because of crash tests. The side impact crash tests mm -hmm. on pre-2010s Mazda 3s yeah, was not was good. Not good. Yep. So good fuel economy, good crash test on that one. And then you kind of toss it up between an 07 Accord, a Honda Accord, and an 07 09 Ford Fusion. You know, same class, 
family sedan, um, you know, reliable. This, the Accord is the final year of the run, and I chose it specifically for that one because we often see that the final year of a car when it's built. Oh yeah, it's one of the is best. Is when they've worked out yeah. all the problems. Yeah. Sure. You know, and it tends to have the most equipment. They, they're okay, fine. We'll throw that in as well. That used to be an option and on the base one, and it was standard limited. Now they all get it. So, yeah. those those are three three there. I'm looking at it from a family perspective. I mean, I've got two yeah. little kids. You know, what what would I I get? What what I recommend to me if I was standing outside right. my body? And also, you're just recommending all the cars. You know, yeah. Well, <laughs> any other ones you want to? I did have a couple uh, others. If I if I uh, you know undid my edits, <laughs> I think we'll roll through. But I have a couple more in the next group. So. Okay. Okay. So Jen, okay. what if you were able to bump the budget up? Okay. Okay. So now you're looking at fifteen thousand dollars as your ceiling. Okay. You know. So, so my take here is that used cars also get you the car that you really always wanted new but could never afford, that reach car. So yep. I put in there an Infiniti M, 07, 08 M. Yep, yep. So you think of a brand new Q70, 50K. Right. Like that's not happening. But as the M, which we liked from even early, we loved that car, the balance, you know, that it gives you the chance to get that car you always wanted couldn't afford, and in my case, I need the all-wheel drive, so that was a cool thing for that one as well. Right, that was available, so yep. rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, yep. so. Yep. Okay, Jake, what about? I like Jen's pick. Oh, you did. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, did no, you? I, and just to say, uh, I mean, you guys didn't. didn't no, 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 that, that wasn't my good. pick. Okay. No, I'm, 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 okay. I'm just saying, I think her, hers was better than mine. And, and for anybody who's familiar with that car, that is the old Infiniti. I mean, that was an, an Infiniti was awesome. Right. I mean, they were just like head-to-head -head with BMW yep. and Mercedes-Benz. The interior quality just, blows away current Infinities. I mean, yeah. it's just a really, really I think the nice infotainment car. system in today's Infinities is the same as back then, though. I think it, I think it was better. I think it was better back yeah. then, yeah. Well, it worked more. It wasn't it was overly more, complicated. It was more reliable. <laughs> right, yeah, right. it was good. Anyway, okay. no, my, my choice was at the M. I would get a 2014 Mazda 3. Again, mind melt. Okay. But I mean, the 14 Mazda 3, I mean, this is basically the same car that you'd buy as a new car. I mean, it's pretty much the same yep. same vehicle. It's got the Sky Active engine, which is super, right. r super fuel efficient. The car's been really reliable. You could get a hatchback version with a stick shift. Right. And again, it is just that stick shift again. such a blast to drive and reliable, fuel efficient, and... Again, nobody even knows that you have a used car. I mean, yeah, it just it's the current body style. You're it is. Yep, like you said. Yep. Good choice. Um, Not as good as yours. As your four. Okay. That's my yeah. choice. It's <laughs> actually five if you no, want you to. No, he ran out of room on this. I didn't want to have to tab over. So uh, 2007 to 10 Acura TSX, because that was one of the last cars that Acura had its mojo. Mm. It's, it's a little small. You can get a wagon. So that's the journalist's yeah, love. Yeah. You know, you get a wagon. There you go. Okay. It was the European Honda Accord. That's right. So you, you have this sporty car. It has luxury-ish features. You know, you, you can get some luxury with it. Oh, yeah. Reliable. Again, super yep. reliable, but fun to drive. Um, if you wanted some luxury at, a, at a, a bargain basement, kind of like your Infiniti M, Hyundai Genesis from 2009. Right. You know, again, yeah. mm -hmm. even the new ones flies on the radar. Mm -hmm. No one would really, I mean, the, the girls are a little different, but you wouldn't really know the difference. A uh, lot of features for the money. Um, and then also the family thing, an 09 Odyssey or a Sienna. And it's kind of a toss-up. Yeah. Uh, you know. Well, that's that's a lot of vehicle for the money. It's a right lot of there. vehicle for the money, and you get 19 miles per gallon, and and you could get all-wheel drive with this Toyota Sienna. Right. And we're right. talking about you know Nissan Versa prices. Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, fifteen thousand dollars. Right. You know, maybe you'd be happy to get a Honda Fit. Right. No, you know, I, that would be tough. You know, That'd be to, tough to get right that. There, yeah. So right. you're getting a vehicle for seven, possibly eight people, depending on the on how it's set sure. up. You're getting you know reliable car, um, and for the Northeast, like you said. You know, people right. who need you it for snow, it. you can get all wheel drive. Yep. So top of the budget, 20 yep. grand. 20 you know, grand. We're, we're still not at the new car prices anywhere, you know, for average, but 20 grand is a lot of money to spend on a new car. Yep. On a used car, excuse me. Yeah. What would you, what would you okay. buy? Okay. You, you touched on this a little bit because the other thing that used to let you get is the bigger car. Right. So I always love, and you'll laugh, and you laugh, but I like that Ford Flex. You talked <sighs> about wagons. You I the Flex. I man. love the Flex, and I do. And again, big kids, so much room. Big appetites. And, and I am a wagon. I just like wagons. It's yep. kind of this retro love that I have. And so you could put seven adults. I mean, we still say, when there's minivans and three-row stuff here, we're oh, fighting sure. over mm -hmm. it. Cause, so if you could get that for the under 20, the reliability is good. Um, one, and again, I looked at Sienna too, that same yep. idea. It's a year later when right. you get up to the 20. One thing I did notice though, so in our used car 
content now, you can actually look and see if there's inventory in your area. One of the cool things is, is can I find one near right, me? Right, right. Mm -hmm. It's all good to, to have this list, but if there's nothing around. Right. You have no right. Idea so you click start. this link, and guess what I found on the floor of Ford Flex? Um, none available because they're so popular. None available because they're so popular. Because it's just you that likes so them. So it's just me. Because <laughs> you have them all in your phone. So there is that <laughs> risk there. So I would have to expand my search area. Right, 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 but right. yeah. But that's where it's none. worth it with a used car. Right. You, know, you can do that. You, you get, you're, you're not, doesn't matter the deal where you buy it at that, at that point. You're I've had two special. friends who have literally flown across the country, picked up a used car in climates that might be even a little better than the Northeast with no salt and all that, sure. and driven the car back. Two. So. You know, that's the other thing is it's not limited to I have the to Northeast. Delete my choice. Uh -oh. Did you have the Ford Flex in there? I did. You did. Wow. Well, I knew it. I'm I not know. the only Flex one. Buddies. I'm exactly. not the only one. Exactly. Jake, I did not have the Ford Flex. <laughs> well, that's good because the conversation would get yes. boring. So I, my choice. So twenty thousand dollars. Twenty grand's your ceiling. It, it's kind of like where you'd buy like a Corolla. It's about twenty grand these days. Yep. Um, you know. A yeah, you're Dodge, not even getting a a Dodge Dart is like probably twenty one. You know, I mean, dude, it was twenty eight and then was, they a lot of money on the hood. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> now they're giving them away. But uh, uh, so it's not a lot of money for a new car. But yeah. my car would, let's see, standard stability control, zero to sixteen five point six seconds, uh, mm -hmm. um, three twenty eight horsepower, mm. uh, roomy, comfortable. Lots of room for, for four people. Um, 2011 and Infiniti G37. Oh, you were just talking about this outside of this table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's, just, it's an incredible yeah. car. I mean, yep. it, it's back when, you know, again, going back to Infiniti, yeah. when they, back when making Infinity, Infinity was great again, right? Yep. You know, make, but I mean, Infiniti just, I mean, it was right up there, three series, oh, yeah. um, A4. I mean, just like head to head, just, but, but extremely reliable right uh, the reliability we have on those those vehicles 2011 just stellar reliability but you get the performance and the driving fun and all that good stuff based on our tests i recommended that to my uncle he has it he, he bought a g37 x loves it drives it to florida drives it back drives around the country because they don't fly so right. they spend mm. a ton oh, of geez. hours in that yeah. he had a, a problem with one rolled into a random dealer in, in georgia they took care of him gave yeah. him a loaner car well, for a while wow got it got it take care. loves it he keeps talking about it every time has Tesla uh, lost, but <laughs> loves his G and, and is kind of at the point of like, he's got it like 200,000 miles on, he doesn't know what to do. You know, right, oh, where gosh, do you go? Where am I gonna go? You know, where do you, you think go? of the new ones and, and such, so. Yeah. Okay, I'll take that off my list. Uh, oh uh, my see, goodness. More mine. Now I have a smaller list. So <laughs> now I'm guys. 2011 Cadillac CTS. Oh yeah. Mm. A little out there, edgy styling, um, but get to that luxury, reliability. It's, it's above average reliability performance um you know it's 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 a it's just a it's a little bit out there and it gives you luxury but it's something that you don't see every day now you mm -hmm. know it, it's it stands out it's a little distinct um it, it was one of the last of that generation a really good cadillac the new cts is a great car this gives you some fun gives you gives you a little bit of room it's it's got some a little bit of cheesiness in the interior i, I will say that but overall that's a solid one um, and family car, I have to give a little bit of love to the Acura MDX that's in my garage. Exactly. My wife has an 11. Right. Mm -hmm. The 2010 was a good car, sporty ride, good handling. Um, tons of buttons. So if you like buttons in your car, I think there's like 47 buttons all over the <laughs> dash. <laughs> um, and it has a, a, a knob as well, you know, central controller. So you get both of those. Um, strong engine. So that, that's my choice. I have a friend who has one. Her teenagers are now driving it. You know, it just keeps going and going and going. Yeah, so, it does. I mean, we, we don't drive it a lot, so we have low miles on it. Yep. But it's it's paid off, and it's one of those things where, like, what will we get, you know, for this? Oh, sure. Yeah. And my wife sits in all the cars that I bring home. She's like, there's, there's Still really like nothing I'm seeing that's that's going over. Well, I mean, I mean, look, I mean, it's like we have older cars. I mean, again, it's like, what would you get? It's like, look at what we do have. And, you know, right. again, you know, my wife's driving a 2006 Toyota Prius. 125,000 miles, it's got stability control, it's got Bluetooth, it's got a backup camera. Yep. It's had no problems, nothing. Right, right. and then we had the Prius we brought in with 200,000 miles on it, and, and the performance drop was insignificant. Right, almost. still getting so 40 miles per gallon. 40 miles per gallon. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So um, with that, we do have a couple questions okay. um, that, that people sent in to us. And, mm -hmm. and one of them is right for you, Jen. In fact, I, I oh. think... I think you might uh, even know who it's about who a fusion. Sent it to. Um, I love the 2015 GMC Camry uh, Canyon, excuse me, oh. but that midsize pickup truck. And you guys seem to hate pickups because they don't drive like cars. Though they're not supposed to either. 
they're trucks, and I don't, you, don't, you guys don't understand why people like them. And oh. I think someone's a little confused. Is that my husband? I think that's my husband. It, it sounds like Jack. <laughs> it's, it's a canyon and yeah. not what he drives. No, so, so that is my husband for, for you guys. That is my husband. He drives a 2012 Nissan Frontier, and he loves his truck. Now, I will tell you, he loads the bed maybe 10 days a year, really. So the other 355 days, he's using it to drive back and forth to work. We're pretty rural. We have horses. We need the bed sometimes. Sure, sure. And he's you know, an outdoorsman. He really likes it. But that's, I think, why we rate them the way we do. We don't expect anybody to, to um, think they're going to be like cars. But we certainly want to make that comparison because for most people, they are using them more as a just transportation than they are as trucks. Right. If and that makes any sense. Yeah. Well, it's, first of all, it's, it's relative yeah. ride, relative handling. Right. No one thinks that your, your husband's truck is going to ride and handle like this Mazda CX-5 over here, you know, or, right. or a Tesla or even a Toyota Corolla. I mean, they're all different categories. But, you know, and, it, and the question came really from talking about the Ridgeline. When we yeah. do test all the pickup trucks in the category, something's going to stand out in some place, and ride is one of the big ones, right, Jake? Well, absolutely, and I think what's really important here is, I, I, I always kind of crack on when people say, you guys don't like this car, you guys don't like, it's not that we don't like it, right. we're just telling people what it does, and I think it's an important distinction. So yeah. it doesn't ride well, okay? It doesn't steer well, and therefore in the ratings, it's not gonna do well. It doesn't mean we don't like it. I not mean, easy to get into a Corvette or a 911, okay? I mean, we went, <laughs> doesn't mean we don't like them. We went right. on road bikes the other day, right? Yep. They don't ride very well. They don't. They're not very comfortable. <laughs> They're not. We love them. They don't protect them. you from the rain either. You know? <laughs> we love them. Exactly. So it's just, it's a different thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, within the category, if you're going to drive it every day and you ask, like the person did, oh, you know, I really, I need a truck for my dad and he drives it every day and yeah. once in a while he goes to the dump. Well, Ridgeline's going to be a heck of a lot better right. for a new car than a right. Tacoma. Well, you touched on two. You got within the category, yep. but you also have within the universe of yeah. all the cars. And that's where the trucks appear that we don't like them, is in the universe. But within trucks, we recognize what they do well and what they don't do well. Exactly, exactly. Other question uh, we have, so you say that all-wheel drive doesn't help you when it comes to cornering. Is that still true in all-wheel drive vehicles that include some form of asymmetric torque vectoring system, such as Acura's super handling all-wheel drive system, for example, or is that something a CR has specifically tested for? I'm going to throw the, we'll let handling, the handling question guy do to, that, to Mr. Yeah. Drift Car. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's a bit of a gimmick. It really is. I mean, look, we we take all the cars around the track. We take them. We push them at their limits. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, with you know, that, that system. Basically, you have to disable stability control and all these things. And there's certain situations where you hit the gas and it'll do some fancy stuff, but it really doesn't make a huge amount of difference at the limit. And it's certainly not anything you're going to see in your normal driving if you're not on a racetrack. And, and even if you are, there are cars that are normal all-wheel drive mm -hmm. that are still going to be handling better. I mean, you know what? All-wheel drive, look, give me a Audi A4 on sure. the track before one of those, the, the versus fancy. Versus my MDX with the SH all-wheel drive. Yes, yes, A4 <laughs> versus MDX, yeah. 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 And that's, that's the thing, everyday driving, 70 miles out on the highway, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not torque vectoring and loading the outside wheels slightly no. to make you hit that, that no. huge bend eight hundredths of a tenth of a second later, you know, quicker. <laughs> It's, it's the tires that it's going to make the yeah. difference right. around that right. corner. That's that's, it's going to be about the grip. It's yep. going to be out the... It may, it may activate the wheel a little quicker, and that may, in, in you know, some sort of testing, say, okay, well, for this grip. But it, you're not going to notice it. Correct. You're not going to feel that. And in fact, mm -hmm. one of the big things with, I, I want to come to with, with Mazda, they have a system where you know, it, it changes the throttle when you turn in to make the car have less settle, and they then said, you're never going to feel it. We're <laughs> never, ever going to feel it. You might see a little less head bob in a video, but that's it. Right. There, there's these incremental things that they do, and you know, it, that, and that's fine. But no, it's not making a big difference in the driving. But Jake touched on it. Tires is just the, well, the key. It, it's, the, it's the influence. So you have these little nuanced things that you're saying you're not going to feel. Then you have tire grip. That's the big that's nut. Huge. If that's you huge. have it or don't have it. Right. right. And right. the only place the nuance thing is maybe a tweak in an emergency situation, but we should capture that. But not, not in your everyday driving, mm -hmm. to your point. Right, right. Well, with that, we're going to wrap up this episode. As always, check out the show notes below for more information on the cars that we talked about in this episode. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.